Okay, so I think we can start. Um, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to our business and thanks to the SME instrument. This is a webinar uh, co-organized by Funding Box and P&O Consultants. Um, we are uh, gonna take you through uh, the continuation of the SME instrument, the now called EIC uh, Accelerate Pilot Program. Um, this program uh, that you will get to know about how it's evolving and how you could apply um, and some tips about it. Uh, as I said, it's a, a webinar organized by two organizations in a partnership, Funding Box, which you probably know. We are a community of entrepreneurs, makers and innovators. We are over 26,000 people in our community. And we basically, uh, our goal is to help any innovator to grow. Uh, we like to to make a, a, a image uh, that is based on the Lord of the Rings that we always like to mention at the beginning of the webinars, uh, where we see every entrepreneur, every innovator as a fraudable song in his path to, to reach more door and to throw to the volcano, the Lord, the, the ring. And we see ourselves as Gandalf. So we are here to help you in all the process and in all your, to, to, to overcome all your perils and to reach your goals. And we do that mostly through funding, through knowledge and connections, trying to focus everything and, and putting as a heart uh, or platform for, for all that. Today we come with a PNO with us. They are good partners we know from many years. They are one of the biggest uh, consultancy and innovation organizations in Europe with over 400 people. Um, and they have a startup roots, roots um, and they have become a market leader in innovation and funding services in Europe. So we do a bit of similar things, but we uh, complement each other quite well. Uh, they are uh, present in eight, in eight countries and they each year harvest have around 1 billion in funding for their clients. Uh, next, today we come with uh, Marco, uh, Marco Molika Colella. Uh, he's an innovation team manager in PO Consultants, uh, working in research and development for the last 14 years. He's also a PhD in engineering, has been working in areas like clean tech, transport, and industrial processes. Uh, helping any kind of organization uh, from SMEs to large enterprises and research centers to innovate, to support their innovation potential, match, match it to the market and develop uh, and finance their innovations and so on. He has broad experience in programs like Horizon 2020 and, and LIFE or CIF. And now I'm going to give the floor to Marco. Uh, Marco, uh, pleased to have you here. Um, yeah. Please, uh, you can go ahead uh, introducing the, the program. Yes, thank you, Andreas. Thank you and welcome everybody. It's my pleasure. So let's look a bit at the agenda. I will try to uh, lead you through, um, let's say, a, a good deep dive into the EIC accelerator just to understand what it is, what is different and why it is different and try to understand some incentives that uh, are behind this unique uh, unique program. Then we will and we will see, in fact, how to apply and some small challenges that every innovator should keep in mind if they want to be eligible for this grant. And then, of course, I will guide you through and just tell you briefly about how PNO can support you in doing that. Then we will leave uh, 10 to 15 minutes to a Q and A session that I hope will be beneficial for you. So what is this? The EIC accelerator. The, uni the EIC, former SME instrument, is a unique grant scheme because uh, it is dedicated to innovation-based businesses and to basically its main purpose is to lead SMEs, um, which includes startups or, um, and scale-ups, let's say, growth companies. Uh, and how it supports? In short, it can support with a unique 2.5 million grant contribution equity free. From 2018, since the EIC was born replacing the SME instrument, 
um, the European Commission wanted to add one unique um, top, one unique uh, element to this picture, which is also equity contribution to really scale up the companies, meaning that each project could sum up up the 2.5 million of the grant to up to 50 million in equity. So things get got probably a little more complicated, probably more uh, even uh, let's say, but they become more serious, let's say, and and to the point and can really support an innovation. Now, um, I'll guide you through what what is the IC accelerator. So some keywords that we have to keep in mind. Uh, but first of all, be before de defining what it is, probably it's better to say what is what it is not. So the EIC is not an R&D project. So it's basically a strategic business stage project. And uh, as you may see, I highlighted some keywords. So it's close to market, which means that, of course, you must be um, at a certain level. You must be heavily relying on R&D probably, but not needing any more heavy R&D investment. Uh, you need money to go to the market. And yet it is bottom up, meaning that you propose your idea to the European Commission, um, even if your ideas should stay in within Europe strategic policies. And of course, your project must demonstrate to, to have outstanding and scalable impact. Going more in detail, uh, Europe strategic policies help us to understand the areas to which your project can, um, can be in. Uh, basically, it's pretty much everything. So you have clean energy, advanced engineering, future mobility, social innovation as well. The key element, though, are that you must have a market creating innovation. So basically, something that the leading companies on the market are not doing yet um, for some reasons. Um, then the project should it should inherently be high risk and high market potential, meaning that without the, the funding, probably it will not be able to get money from other sources or for, from a bank um, and or from a normal sta or from a standard private investors because because probably its uh, return in economic in terms of time and, and interest could be too high for you. So the purpose of the EIC is to support SMEs, including startup. Uh, geographically, all Europe and associated countries, so for example, Norway is an associated country, is eligible. Uh, small addition here, of course, you know that UK is living. Um, so UK is still eligible for 2020 provide a certain condition that we will we will look at later. Um, but what does it mean at the mature business stage? Because this is a business project, right? So we need to understand what is a business a mature business stage. Basically, it's two things. From the point of view of the product or the service you are developing, because you can do both. Basically, you have to uh, already been through a technology validation, meaning a proof of concept or a minimum viable product. And you have to make a market product fit so you have to understand you have to to know your market to know your possible clients and to have us the, the knowledge of the fact that it can be uh, a breakthrough so it means that in other terms you must have accomplished a good business plan because part of the proposal is actually your business plan um, the focus in terms of the target companies, as I see, uh, as, as you can see, uh, the focus, especially now in this phase, 2018, 2020, which is considered to be a pilot, is on grow, growth phase companies. So companies that in the startup world are known as pre-seed, seed and early stage companies. Probably companies that have no so much good profit and loss accounts, uh, but have a really strong project that can boost it um, incredibly. Um, and how does it work? Well, this is the, the, the mixed finance I was telling you about before. So this is the unique approach that was uh, changed in 2018 by the IC. So there is a mixed optional and parallel process. Why do you mean it's mixed? Because it's based on what they call a blended finance, meaning that you can add a grant funding to an equity funding. It's optional because you can opt either for one or both, meaning that up to 2020, you can, every time you make an application, you can select that you only go for the grant. You can select that you go for the grant and equity, or you can select that you go for grants. But if the commission thinks, because it may happen, that your project could be subject also to equity, you allow them to rethink your project in that way and to discuss with you that. What is still not allowed is to apply only for equity, but it's probably something that will change 
from 2021 when the new framework program will be in place. This is because more and more the European Commission is working to get the private capitals in contact with innovation and so this is fully compliant with their approach. So as you see, grant funding will go up to 2.5 million euro from a minimum of half a million. Same thing for equity but can re it can reach up to 50 million. Uh, the distinction in between which money goes for grant and which money goes for equity is based on what they call TRL, meaning technology readiness level or equivalent measure. So uh, basically, they for, for not to breach the uh, market competition though, the grant funding can only go to TRL 6 to TRL 8, which means to a system which is accomplished, qualified, but not still operative on the market. Uh, while the, the equity, so all the support, is basically dedicated to internationalization, commerci commercialization, market deployment, capital harvesting, and something like that, which is, which, which can define as TRL9, everything that brings you actively on the market, on flight on the market with the three clients. Um, one important point of this uh, scheme is the exceptional speed of, with which you got the money. It's uncompared with any other scheme, of course, uh, it, has, it has its drawbacks, but basically the grant funding can uh, provide the first cash, which is actually up to 40% of the grant in eight week, in 16 weeks. So decision in between eight weeks, money in your account in 16 weeks, which I think is very, is very important. And 40% means that if you applied for the maximum, it makes more than 1 million cash on your bank account in 16 weeks. No other schemes can do that. Um, on the other side, on the equity side, uh, you will go through a parallel process that will be longer than the the the, um, the grant funding. Uh, but let me let me make a step back. The grant funding is managed directly by the European Commission, with which you will sign a grant agreement. Uh, the equity uh, will be subject to a due diligence, and you will deal the due diligence with the EIC fund, which is an institution created on purpose for this, uh, which will be supported by the EIP advisors. The EIP is the European Investment Bank. So they're really strong expert that will guide you through to meet the investors. And this process is longer. So you will start your grant agreement while you will still have to define your investment, your investment agreement, uh, which will go through a due diligence, of course, like every equity investment. And at the moment, the process is still slow. Um, the, the number says that you are in between nine to 12 months. The purpose is to become six months. So this is the picture. What other? Well, so we, we, we spoke about TRL. So I thought that it was good to anticipate your question. What technology or to a business maturity, service maturity? So basically, if you're applying for uh, EIC, you must be in the right hand side of the TRL scale, meaning that you must be no low, uh, be, be below the TRL 6, so technology valid, validated and demonstrated, and you must reach TRL 9. Or TRL 8. TRL 8 is here that you can make thanks to the equity support or with your own resources if you don't want to uh, consider any equity investment in your company. What can you fund? So we are now talking of the grant funding because basically with the equity money, you can do what you want to make your business growth. But in the grant funding scheme, you are subject to usual laws and rules that are applies to most European projects. So basically we are talking about a project duration in between 12 and 30, 24 months because it's, it's a close to market project. So you're not expected to take more to complete it. Um, and all your costs, direct and indirect, will be 70% reimbursed by the European Commission with uh, prepayment, as I said before, of 40% within 16 weeks by your after your application. The costs you can put in your project description are direct costs, so your staff, your travels, uh, your services, so your contractors in general, services, but you can, it can include software licenses, for example, consultancies. You can include business planning, for example, or legal consultancies, so also IP items and contractors in general, if you are, if you are, if you are dealing with a strong capital investment project, so related to hardware, for example. Then you can charge your equipment cost and of course consumable. Then you have an ind indirect cost, which are basically all the rest that you 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 are you you spent while running your business. 
and they are not calculated, but they are defined as a flat rate as the 25% of your direct cost. So the sum of direct cost as indirect cost is reimbursed 70%, which basically means based on experience that if you only consider your direct cost, the total reimbursement uh, grows up to 87%. If you consider the 25 flat rate uh, that the indirect costs are granted by the European Commission. So this is the, uh, the scheme. Um, and who will be evaluating you? So you have these two processes, the, the grant process and the equity process, which run for a bit. And um, so you have different steps. The first steps, which is probably the, the trickiest one, uh, is a step which is done by independent evaluators. Each proposal is evaluated remotely by a set of uh, four, up to four evaluators. So these evaluators, uh, are the busiest one basically because they have to manage a huge amount of proposal. SME, SME instrument before and EIC now uh, give you the possibility to apply more times during the year, four times per year, roughly every three months. Uh, what happens is that uh, for different reason, the average uh, applications number, every cutoff is more than 2000. Uh, for the last one, for example, we touched the record due to COVID situation and other issues, but we, we doubled. So we, we, get, we got to 4000. But basically the system now can as managed, let's say in, in a good way, uh, up to 2000 proposal each three months, which include the resubmission because one of the uh, of the, um, the important things to say that you can reapply your project if it doesn't go well. Um, of course, you have to read carefully the, the, the evaluation and understand if it's doable or not, but you can do it. So these guys here have to evaluate 2,000 proposals in four weeks, uh, and they will provide an independent judgment with their motivation, and the result will be that you will, you, you will, will be scored into an, an evaluation summary report. The threshold is 13 out of 15, so it's very, very high. Only if you, um, basically, only if you score more than 13 and you are, let's say, in the, and the total, they, may, they make a rank, ranking, of course, and a ranking which is equal of, um, to the double of the budget that they have available for that call, will be invited to a further step of evaluation. This further step is a live, Pitch, even if probably for the next session will be remote for obvious reason, and it will made by a, a jury of experts. This jury of experts are is divided in six commissions depending on the topic. So you will have ICT, you will have engineering, you will have you will have finance, you will have life science, and so on. And this will be a mix of uh, high skill investors and uh, technical guys. So people that are from the business angel world, from the venture capital world, and they will have the final say on your selection. So the score that will be given by the independent evaluators and the ranking can be completely put upside down by this jury. Um, how you do it? You are invited usually to Brussels and now remote to have a, a 30 minute interview based on a, your pitch, 10 minutes plus 20 minutes uh, of Q&A by, the, by the, the jury. Uh, they will then rank you and probably usually what happens is that half the pitch go to next step so they are funded to the grant agreement sign and the other half uh, are not so they are uh, given however uh, a seal of excellence which means that your proposal will be uh, supported will be recommended for funding at for example at national level but not from the EIC not at that time at this time unfortunately um, if you opted for receiving the equity and or the, um, directly or you simply say okay i would be inter i want a grant but i would be interested also in the equity and you do it is just by ticking the checkbox on the application model then you will also go through the due diligence and as i said this is an independent process up to one here carried on by the eic fund and the eib advisors Next step. So, just some hints and tips about equity. Equity is a different, it's a difficult matter uh, because, of course, it means that you are you are um, putting away part of your company. So, basically, you are dealing with an investment agreement based on some concept. So, the patient capital, so all the return of investment expected by the by the investors will be with a longer time. The investment will be in the framework of equity or quasi equity. So I put a figure which is self-explanatory, subordinated loans, convertible bonds, preferred stocks. These are the options. 
um, they are provided directly by co-investors that are found by the EIC and presented, introduced to you by the EIC fund or by the EIC fund directly. So they evaluate different options. The company has to like the investors and the investors has to like the company. If there is a match, they go on. Otherwise, they can find other investing instruments. An important note, if for some reason th there is some breach in this investment contract and there is something that doesn't go, also at the monitoring stage means that you have got your contract but then your project doesn't go as expected or you just decided to breach or to move out, of course, uh, all the contracts may uh, be stopped, not only from the investing contract, but also from the grant point of view. Of course, there is no reimbursement. What you, what you have spent, you have spent. But there is the possibility that the project stops. Of course, it's, uh, it's something that one must say, but it's not what usually happens. So how to apply? The application process is indeed very simple. Uh, you use the standard funding and tender portal, and on that, you can uh, simply upload uh, administrative of course you have to be registered to the portal but it's a very easy uh, it's a very easy easy process and then you have to upload uh, a number of documents so the application forms I put also at the bottom uh, at, uh, below at the bottom the um, some links provided by the Italian national content point so clicking there you will have already the template uh, basically what you have to deliver is a uh, uh, the proposal template, so the document number one, which is built by three sections, excellence, impact, and implementation. Document two, which is basically your CB, uh, a, a more explanation on security and ethics element if they are related to your project and other supporting documents. Annex four, most important, and it's a new in this new concept for the SC. Uh, an Excel file, which is a, the full financials and corporate information which are especially important if, you're, if you want to opt for the equity. Then document four is your pitch, a slide presentation, the same one that you will be allowed to present to the jury if you go in front of them. Um, now let's see, excellence impact implementation. This is the core of the project. It's 30 pages where you have to impress the evaluators. Um, not telling lies, but impress them. So excellence is about your innovation, why it's important for the market and for the clients, and what stage of develop, development is it is now. The impact section is indeed your business plan. And the implementation is basically uh, what you're gonna do in your project. So the, the world breakdown structures as the, 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 the grant, uh, the, those who are familiar with grants can know, um, your financial resources needed, and your description of also how you're gonna uh, fill the, the remaining 30%, which is not covered by the grant, being need equity or being your resources, and your team, which is a very special and important uh, point. As I said, the financial document, you will be needed to, com to, to complete all the financial. So this is a kind, kind of new, especially for people coming from research, but you will need them all. So profit and loss, balance sheet, cash flow, uh, plus, especially if you're going to opt for equity, structure, financial um, company structure, financial history, capital structure, and the, the capital structure in the perspective in which you're thinking about an equity proposal. So effectively, you deliver your proposal for equity. That should be validated by the due diligence, of course. Now, what are the challenges? Uh, there are so many, but uh, I try to try to highlight the the, the, um, the best. So, the the first step with the independent evaluators is the short time, not your short time to prepare the application. Their short time to review, uh, which means that you need to have a clear proposal and probably good look and tidy, which is a kind of good effort on 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 everyone's side. Then you must have a market creative and innovative. Uh, business, service, or product, which means that you have to, of course, it being smart enough to have a very good product and service, but also you have to know your market. You have to be able to tell about your market uh, and to understand why the market leaders and the company leading the market on that specific topic are not doing what you are doing or cannot do it and why you are before them. Before them. Then, as I said, you have to talk about your risk. So you must be a risky project, which means that uh, hardly any bank could give you the money or also private investors for the reason that I tried to explain before. 
um, then you must be already tested. So you must be a mature business project, starting from channel six to seven, and scalable, which means that at least you have you must have a clear plan or develop a clear plan, a clear business plan, as I said. Then you must present a very strong team. So the top requirement to success is describe their commitment. You are required to, to for each people to say to define a percentage of their commitment on the project you want them to finance. Then you must be proficient with financials, or at least you have to uh, understand and compile some good financials. So uh, this is very important to turn into number what you want to do and what you want from the commission. Um, and then prepare a good pitch. You must do it before the, when you do the application time. So you must remind that in 10 minutes you have to impress. So you can use your fantasy, but a good pitch is probably a very it's a very introductory step for sure defining your project so uh, as i said four cut off per year so when will you have the next chances well if you are aiming for the next 19 may probably you're already aware of it uh, otherwise the last cut off in 2020 will be in 7 of 7 of october some special note here in both these deadlines the ec aims at having invited at the pitch stages 25% at least of women led companies meaning ceo women so take it into, into account when, when there is your application. Also, the 19th of May, so in two weeks, we will have the first clear example of how the European Commission wants to support the Green Deal. The Green Deal is the new policy from the, uh, for sustainability in Europe. So basically your, your project, your product, your service must be related to the bullet point I put on the right. So increasing climate mitigation, secure energy, clean transport, and zero pollution, toxic free environment. And take a note, uh, you will have to check which one of these bullet points you are referring to, and you have to justify and quantify. So for example, uh, you are in the clean energy topics, you are the product that is decreasing CO2, well, try to quantify CO2 in any hypothesis that your product spreads you while. How piano can help? So, um, let me just uh, recap a bit our skills. So you, here you can see our larger client, of course, we have a lot of SMEs, we have startups, we have SMEs, but uh, it's good also to show the, the largest name in which we operate with the technology transfer concept. And of course, I should have funding box here um, as our partner. Um, by the way, our numbers, as I said, more than 1 billion harvested collectively in more than 200 large projects per year. Um, 400 success rate on new schemes. Of course, we cannot lie on this. There are different schemes. On some schemes, we can have 80% and some 60%. Uh, however, in the, the EIC is the most competitive in you. However, Fiano has, let's say, three to four times the average success rate in Europe. We are experts. Most of the people in Fiano, technical expert, I mean, most of the people, roughly 60%, me included, uh, have a PhD. Um, in engineering, in physics, in chemistry, and so we are. We tend to be sectoral expert. On the other half, or in some cases, like also me, we have also a financial background during our um, studies at university or later on, so MBA, executive masters, and so on, to support also the finance, <clears throat> which is so related to grants now. And so, how we can support, basically, in all the step of your application. So first point, uh, you have to be prepared. Not everyone is for the IC, so it's very challenging. So the first step is challenge your ambition. So we compare, we can compare your innovation against the state of the art and give you a good reference point if you're, if you're heading in the good direction. And we, of course, can look at the business plan maturity and say, okay, you're not ready yet, go next time, or yes, you're ready. We have to rush. Um, development, so help you growth, optimize the process to supporting hands-on on their proposal. So before that, supporting on your business plan. So we can also complete and work with you on your business plan and training in entrepreneurship for growth. For growth, then of course, we support in the funding place. So it's preparing your proposal. We can review your proposal. That's one thing. So you prepare your proposal and we can review it for you and we can do it evaluator style or we can help you develop your proposal. We can develop with you hands-on support, um, putting in place all the things that are required for a good European project. And also, it, this includes supporting your pitch preparation, which is something not trivial uh, to be trained. Probably 
startups people are more used to that to it uh, but uh, in every case you see a pitch and a good a good pitch uh, training is, is always welcome then of course if your project is financed also at that stage piano can support you with a full project management grant compliance and technology valorization meaning uh, supporting also some aspects of internationalization partnership with um, with possible investors or tech or larger technology company that as you have seen we have in our portfolio Yes, so what if the IC is not for you yet? So th this is something very important because uh, I think it's very relevant uh, that uh, you understand as an SME or a startup that there are a lot of initiatives um, that can support you in Europe. So here we can also support you. If uh, we find that your IC project is not, uh, is not ready yet, we can also give you stronger alternatives. You funded with very high, uh, with very, uh, very high uh, funding rates. Um, so we can support in that. I put here some logos, which for me are the most important. So LIFE, which is the environmental program to develop clean tech in Europe. And it's very, uh, it's one of our favorite actually. Then you got the EIT, which is co-founded by Horizon, by the framework program as the European Institute of Innovation and Technology, where you can have different, um, you have different institutes for mobility, for energy, for raw materials, for example, and they provide uh, scale up grants or acceleration services so we, we support you also with that and then of course collaborative projects uh, for which um, meaning make make companies step into uh, large consortia maybe university research centers and uh, large industries with a european uh, wideness to, to to enlarge your cooperation and um, and your skill so this is also important uh, to understand, probably we hope that uh, we 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 be able to talk of these schemes in, in other sessions. And um, so, uh, of course, you will have our contacts now. Probably Andreas will speak about that. So for me, it is all. I hope it was clear enough. I would be more than happy to uh, to answer to your question. All right. Thank you very much, Marco. Um... I think I wrote it in the chat, but now we are going to get into a Q&A session. I have my colleague Paul here. I think we've got a, a good number of questions. Um, I think Paul, the idea is that uh, you will read them loud and Marco will, will answer them, no? Yep, abs absolutely. Uh, we, so we have quite a few questions, as you mentioned, and we have a first one from Sebastian. Sebastian, since your question is rather specific, I'll actually unmute you and you can maybe say it out loud and potentially clarify it if uh, required for Marco. So uh, there you go. Hello, hello. hello. My question is uh, about uh, what are the forms of uh, our contribution to remaining 30% of the budget? I mean, uh, in many cases, we are doing doing the work for uh, for the company and how, how we can account it in the, in the in the total budget. How how do you validate if we have uh, if we have uh, the remaining 30% available for the company during the project? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, well, basically, uh, the 30% the provided that, for example, you don't have, in terms of actual cash flow, basically, the, the, the reimbursement by European Commission, the, the money that the European Commission gives you is based on a, uh, on a reimburse, on reimbursement. What does it mean, reimbursement? Okay. It means that you will have to provide invoices if you are talking about contractors, and you will have to provide um evidence of the time spent by your staff basically like in every european project so um, the at the moment of the grant agreement you will have uh, calculated to define your budget and staff costs for example you have defined your hourly mm -hmm. rates which should be compliant with your standard policy in the, in the company so basically uh, in a usual usual if you are not under an audit you uh, provide your uh, your reporting uh, your financial reporting you you have to bring the evidence that of the time spent by your staff the invoices and so this is the evidence uh, unless you are, you are not going under a stricter uh, audit procedure that of course could more, could go in more detail in the contracts how you selected them and so on but usually if you are paying with your own resources which you are supposed to have basically 
it depends on the on the invoices you have paid and, and on the stuff uh, that you have uh, put on the project. So I hope this this uh, clarifies yes, a bit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so then comes another question from uh, Ferran. I would like to know what you understand by Europe's strategic policies, Marco. What I do understand from yeah, what the EU strategic policies? Yeah. What is it? This is kind of a broad, of a broad question. Um, let's say that I understand that uh, th there are some uh, topics that are always um, let's say lucky, uh, meaning that uh, they, they are more, more likely to be uh, to be funded usually. But in the EIC, what I can what I can actually say is that usually it is really bottom up, meaning that um, the next May, of course, is different because you are going for green deal. So we are basically dealing with clean tech and sustainability. But if you're not doing that, if you're not thinking to the green deal, it's really bottom up. So the, the thing that counts the most is the innovation of the product and the um, and the market outreach that you can demonstrate to have and you are convincing to uh, to tell to the, to the evaluators. So uh, we can think that European policies are good or wrong, but I can tell you with a specific reference to the EIC that if you have a good product with a clear market fit um, and you have a good, you're lucky enough to be good enough to tell the good story, the EIC will can improve your can improve your business. Whether you are 100% into the EC uh, declared policy or not, of course, the EIC will never fund something which the, e, the European policy are completely against. So it, it's very unlikely, for example, to fund something dealing with uh, fossil fuels, not in general, but I mean to develop fossil fuels, not in general. Of course, there can be some technologies that rely on fossil fuels still, but uh, I'm, you, you know what I mean. So I will not give a judgment of European policy <laughs> on the European policy here, but I can tell you the EIC is the probably the, the grand scheme that is it, it can keep separated from it the most. So it, it can give you the freedom to move in between the, the policies and deploy them, deploy them for the best of your company. Okay, and now here comes another question from Ridwick. Hi, I'm from India. My country does not come under uh, Horizon 2020, but I would like to set up my company in Poland. Uh, can I therefore apply? Yes, you can. Of course, if you if you if you have a company and from a member state and you qualify as an SME, you can. Just uh, so it's a new company. One point of attention: um, probably you have to qualify to the SME definition. So this is important, for example, for all those companies that can be um, parent companies. So you can have a small company, but have a, a share per, a share from other larger company. Be, uh, be aware that you have th th that share must be such that you keep the definition of SME for the European Commission. But yes, you can. You can open in Poland and then apply, of course. Okay, then uh, one from Tony. Can a solution that is on market, uh, already on the market, but with few sales, apply to grant funding? If it's already on the market, no, because as I said, the, um, at at least at the moment, absolutely no, because you you have to be something that open new market. So by definition, it does not qualify for the IC. Um, there's a, a, and of course, the, the innovation topic should be always present, at least in the market. I mean, not, if not technological, in a market, in, in a market perspective. So you cannot, uh, off, but if your product probably evolves something that is on the market, that is a different matter. But if it's already on the market, no. Okay, then a question from uh, Tobias. How many projects will be accepted for the EIC accelerator and how, who, how many applications do you estimate? 
I accepted you mean uh, by in general well in general yes so as i said in general you have up to 2000 the average is 2000 proposal per cutoff now you, we we know that this 2000 proposal per cutoff usually more than a half are resubmission uh the the official uh, success rate of funded proposal is 6% for each cutoff so you can make your uh, rough calculation here okay then uh, I actually skipped a question from Monica. Monica, I'm, I've just unmuted you. I'm not sure I understood your question, so maybe you can say it out loud. Mm, can, can I can I add something? Can I add something to the previous question? Sure, Probably sure, go, it, go, it, go, it, go, it, go. it better. Yeah. So in the as I said in the last cutoff, so it was uh, in March we had an astonishing 4,000 proposal, and this was due for, to, to several reasons. Uh, the first reason is probably the emergency of COVID-19, so a lot of companies seeking money, and 1,000 proposal of different level of readiness. Some were, I heard of some, some of them that were really one pager or something, were dedicated to COVID-19. Uh, on top of that, probably there was a crowded uh, proposal application because in May we have the Green Deal. So basically, having a, a whole cutoff which is dedicated to Green Deal topics made the the the, the non-deal proposal rush to apply before of it. Uh, but I think that this 4,000 is a uh, is an absolute uh, peak that cannot be replicated. So we have to expect. 2000 around 2000 probably something more now because of the of a crisis of covid uh, but we have to say that there are some proposals ongoing to give more budget to the to the eic and i think that it will probably have and uh, also proposals are to limit the number of application from a single company at least in some ways um, so for because now for example you can apply as many times as you want I think that probably this should, could change, and in my opinion, probably it should, uh, because it generates a circle of uh, a little less time to evaluation and the worse evaluation, or the, the risk to have worse evaluation in some cases. Sorry, um, wait, okay, we, can, we, can, we can go to the next one. Okay, um, Monica, if you hear me, so you're unmuted if you want to clarify your question about construction. Well, if uh, we'll we'll go to the next one, and if you want to clarify it afterwards, we can check it. So the next question, Marco, is from Mirko. Uh, what is the correct level of financial business plan details to be included in the proposal? Uh, cash flow projections uh, seem to not be sufficient, even if provided in details. Uh, I would say that it is, it is not completely true. I mean, uh, um, the business plan as every document uh, is valid as far as it, it is close to, uh, to the truth. And of course, we also admit that when there is an evaluation, there, there is a gas feeling. So what I, what I want to say is that cash flow evaluation by per se is not uh, is not an indication of the fact that the business plan is correct. What must be convincing is the study of the market and the description of how you want and have studied how to reach the market. So how, for example, you have rebuilt your value chain, your possible interested stakeholders, uh, your intermediaries, for example, how you're gonna reach them, uh, your, your detailed content. So you must be very detailed on that point of view. Then you can go and proceed with good financials, but the financials and their assumptions are related to the study of the market. And so as more uh, as the study of the market is credible, as your cash flow uh, will be credible, but uh, only having a good uh, financial detail from the point of view of the balance sheet or the or the cash flow or the valuation um, will not be considered as good as the market. Also take into consideration that is mostly important for the first stage of evaluation because the first stage of the evaluation where the remote evaluators are concerned you will find uh, a mi more mixed people also technical people so they will be 
less inclined to um, to check if you have done your cash flow exercise correctly, but they will be more inclined to check if your market description is credible. Um, then, of course, your cash flow will be will become important when you go to the jury for the evaluation. Uh, also, uh, in terms of, uh, for example, your equity evaluation or something like that is one of the methods. But uh, is the, the the premises and the forwards before the cash flow that is important. All right. Uh, then a question from Roger. If you apply for a phase two with blended finance and fail in getting the blended finance part, can you still get up to 2.5 million euros? Uh, well, if you have applied for both and your investment contract fail, there is indeed the risk that um, because it shouldn't happen, it should not happen. So if your investment con because it shouldn't happen because the EC ensures that if you don't find a good investor in the end, it will be the EIC fund itself that will invest in your company. So if this doesn't happen, and you don't get an investment contract, uh, it, there can be that your project stops yeah, because probably the thing is related to the fact that your project was not credible or there was something wrong in your company that the, was not considered, that was not considered uh, or something like that. So there is the risk that if investment fails or during the monitor it fails because the project is not going it's not going well, also the grant uh, stops. So this, this is a risk, but it's a risk, as I said, because it should not happen because in any way, in anyhow, the EIC fund will is to invest in you. So if everything's good, you will receive an investment up after the due diligence. All right. Uh, so Marco, brace yourself. There's a few coming up. Um, a question from Mike. If we apply and for whatever reason we fail, are we still allowed to apply again for the next call? Yeah, yeah, sure. As I said, uh, you can apply at the moment. You can apply as many times as you want. And the proof is that uh, in 2000 application every three months, the half are resubmissions. And this is it's still like this. It is something under discussion that probably is going to change. The only limit you have with the SME instrument, also like the IC at the moment, is that each company can have only one project at a time. I mean that you cannot apply for two projects. And if you're running one project because you're you're lucky enough or good enough to win it, to be awarded, you cannot apply for another EIC unless you have finished the first one. Okay, then uh, just a second. Um, is it, is it, I'm sorry, is it possible from uh, Martin, is it possible to use the grant funding part for certifications like the CE certification? Yeah, yes, you, certification and that kind of stuff, like uh, legal services, patenting, they, they, are, um, they are eligible costs. Okay, then a question from Marina. Are these funds only for, for EU SMEs or can an EU SME who is also operating in Africa, for instance, eligible? Is it eligible for these funds? The eligibility depends on the country uh, of uh, the, the SME. So you can have an international market. All right. Yeah. It, it, so it's very easy. Okay. Uh, can non-green deal related businesses apply for the 19th of May uh, call? We are in life sciences and did submit an application on the 20th of March for the urgent COVID call too. Yeah, uh, no, the next call is dedicated to the green deal. So the next call for non-green deal is for um, October. Okay, understood. Um, then. Wait a second. Unless um, you don't find your project, uh, a connection of your project with some of the indicator of the bullet point in the in the Green Deal topics. Okay. Um, then a question from Irina, uh, followed up on the question before, is beta testing considered already on the market product and therefore cannot apply to EIC? 
a better testing. So I assume we are referring to a software product. Okay. Uh, I don't think that better testing is is market because uh, you should. I should know more, but I don't usually uh, associate better testing to market. So I mean that uh, you should if the product is already used by the client that already pay you it means that is on the market and so my answer would be no but if it's a product under development and the better testing is part of the project you want to to develop through the ic then it, it can be of course it, it can be a phase in your implementation of your project a lot of software pro related projects uh, have a better testing uh, procedure inside the project implementation all right understood <laughs> Um, now a question from George. Uh, I participated into the March EIC call, but we do not have the result yet. Can we still file for the Green Deal one in two weeks? Uh, it should be possible, meaning that uh, they use, when they announced that it will be a delay, so the, the pitch session will be, I think, around the 20th of May, and so uh, as it happens every time that uh, such situation occurs, they will for sure release the results before the next application, or at least it's always happened because just because otherwise they would prevent the company to apply for the next for the next session. So the answer, 99% is yes, you will receive the result before and you will be able to apply. Okay, uh, then one from Dimitri. What is the difference between 30% and 20% own financing? Not sure I get it. At 20%, what is 20% own financing? I'm not sure. Own, own uh, financing. The... Own financing. I can, um, I can check with uh, Dimitri. I'll yeah. unmute him. Just a second. Uh, there you go, Dimitri, if you want to clarify your question. Uh, hi, uh, my question was, uh, there were different co-financing um, options. Yes, uh, a flat rate, 25%. Yes. And uh, is it the only, uh, the only uh, co-financing or there is also 30% like no, what's the no, difference? No, 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 uh, sorry, sorry, it was not clear then. Um, no, 25% uh, is the way that the indirect costs are calculated. So basically, you have your direct cost, your staff, your travels, your communication equipment. And then if, for example, the sum of those costs is, is 100, then you will receive 25 as indirect costs. That's what it means. Okay. So 25 is the percentage that defines the indirect cost. That's a flat rate. So you don't calculate. It's a, it's a, you, you spend 100, they give you uh, 25 more. And um, uh, thank you. And I have uh, uh, another small question. For example, we are uh, uh, we are running artificial intelligence company, and yep. uh, we have some products that are working well in in in, in English language, but yep. we would like to develop uh, uh, or uh, start these products in in all European languages. Is it yep. a new product or still product on the market? I, I would be inclined to say that it's it's not a new product, so it's the, the EIC is not the right it's the right mm -hmm. instrument. I Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, a question from Daniele. If I already have some funding, can I apply to this instrument? If you have other funding from other instruments, yes, yes you can. The only the, the only funding funding you cannot have is another EIC. Okay, got it. Um, then a question from Colleen. Where can we find the Excel sheet template for the financial uh, Excel spreadsheet? Um, on the website, but I think that in my presentation you will upload. I put the link uh, in this slide. You will see at the bottom some um, some link. Annex four is the financial information required, so you will uh, you will download directly the Excel. Otherwise, you have to go on the funding and tender portal on the EIC webpage, and uh, you can easily download it. Uh, feel free to to write me, and uh, I can I can guide you through. But uh, you find the link here. It's the link directly to the Italian NCP, and you should download directly the file. All right. Uh, then a question from well, Clive or Clive, sorry for the pronunciation. Will, will the scheme be affected by the current situation regarding COVID nineteen? 
uh, it, it has been in different ways. So the exceptional number of proposals, and probably they will put more budget. So it hopefully will be. Uh, and then in the pitch sessions, because next pitch session for obvious reason will not be live. Uh, on top of that, uh, no further modification, uh, unless there is, I mean, there will be a further attention on life science and COVID educated proposals. Okay, and another question, does the situation with Brexit affect applications from the UK? Yes, and I feel like I have forgot something before. Um, as of uh, February 2020, UK will be still eligible for grants all 2020, but you will not be eligible for the equity as of February. So if you are a UK company, you can apply for all 2020, but you cannot apply for the equity. You can only apply for the grant. All right. Uh... A question from Claudio. Is it possible to insert the project the cost of a rent? The rent. Leasing and rent. Yes, you can. Okay. And uh, by the way, do research costs, so testing, prototype position, sorry, are not eligible anymore? Uh, R and D and pro that there is room for some R and D and prototype cost in the, the limit is that you must start from material six, but if you have to to step farther from a, a prototype to uh, let's say a more complete market product, so you you are fully eligible. And uh, yes, if you have if if the prototype means that you have already demonstrated you have a minimum viable product and you have to build a prototype, meaning something which is a real replica of the commercial product, yes, you can. Okay. Uh... Then a question from Aristos: How much do PNO charge for the service? Uh, I guess I guess that yeah. is, is, is tailor made, right? Like it depends. Yeah, uh, it, it really depends because as you've seen, there is a whole lot of services. So it's it, it really depends. Usually, it, it depends because, if, for example, if you are talking about a review, we are talking about an hourly rate, and it depends on the with a cap probably. So it depends on the number of hours. If you're talking about full support, which, which can start from the business plan. Uh, by the way, we, we review the first thing. I mean, the, the, the first business plan, we, we try to understand if your project is good. We, we do it we do it anyway, because it's useful also for us. But the, the farther step, meaning uh, we go for a review or we go for a full proposal development can have very different costs. Um, what I can tell you is that uh, if we go for a full proposal application, we mean that we support uh, also in completing the business plan, for example, and uh, and also to write a proposal. Our business model is based on a, on a double uh, fee, so we share the risk in a way that you pay when we submit the proposal. So that's part of the risk that it's up to the company, and then we require also a success fee if the proposal is awarded. But it's a way to charge less when when you apply. So on the basic fee, so basic fee plus a success fee as we call them. But the, the, the say that the, the amount can be very different depending on the, on the full service, of course, because if you are requiring a full proposal and a business plan, it can go up to 100 and 200 hours of work. And so uh, should I give a, fi a figure? Uh, basically, a review can easily be in between 2,000, 3,000, uh, let's say a small review. But when you go to a full application package, which include a business plan, you can easily have a basic fee that uh, exceeds a bit to 10,000. Easily. Okay, maybe a couple. If you, if you want to rent, I don't want to, to, to scare anybody, but uh, <laughs> that's. Uh... <laughs> uh, okay, a couple of questions before ending the session, maybe. Another one related to the cost, uh, Marco. Can these yes. consultancy uh, costs uh, be covered uh, with the grant? By the proposal. Uh, Unfortunately, no. Uh, I mean that you cannot have a budget voice, which is a success fee for a consultancy company or a basic fee for a consultancy company. Um, of course, the grant will allow you to have the indirect costs, which means that sooner or later you will have a cash flow with that 25% that covers usually our, our basic fee and success fee. Because if you consider that our success fee usually provided as a percentage of the funding, which is averagely that I can say in between five and six percent averagely 
averagely. Um, basically, the 25% of the direct cost covers it, but it cannot cover it officially. You cannot put it in, into the budget officially. Okay. Then, of course, there is all the flexibility. For example, if from a very commercial point of view, there is all the flexibility. If then you will have uh, the services of PNL also during the project, of course, those can be partially eligible in a way. So, for example, support for project management, so on, and commercially there can be uh, a deal, but uh, which cannot cover all the success fee. All right. Then a last question from Andrea. If I only have uh, an idea, can I still apply uh, for the October batch or do I actually need to first open a company? You need to open a company because uh, to, to process the application practically, you, you have to be a registered company on the port. Okay, well, I guess this ends the session. Andres, would you want to conclude if, if there's anything else to, to mention? Uh, no, not really. Uh, I want to thank uh, Marco. I think it was a very interesting webinar. Um, thank you. He replied very sharply to all questions. So thank you for being here with us. Uh, thank I you. I hope the audience also enjoyed the, the, the session. Uh, we will be posting the the webinar and the presentation in the funding box uh, portal uh, platform in the funding box community specifically but we will be sending you an email uh, with a link to it so basically thank you everyone um have a good day and hopefully a successful application to the eic accelerator thank you yeah. very much wish you the best bye 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 bye, bye, -bye. bye, -bye.